Hey guys, Mike here from Sell Your Service and I am with Jason Whaling. Jason, how are you doing? Fantastic. I know it's uh, morning over here. I think it's um, towards the end of the day for you, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, end of the day. So I'll be, <laughs> I'll be clocking off soon. Not exactly, but um, man, thanks so much for joining us and, and jumping on. I'm, I'm a huge fan of your YouTube channel has just like exploded over the last you know, year, 18 months, not without hard work, of course. And what I wanted to talk to you about today was the tools that are available that we should know about when we're building marketing funnels for our customers. So mm -hmm. let's just kind of kick that off. Where do you start? Do you have like a top five or a top six? Do you start at the bottom? Yeah, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Yeah. So I think the first place I start is from a operation standpoint. And I know there's a lot of different options out there. And really my focus is making sure that when we're servicing a client or when we're providing software that we're using less than five across all of our clients. Um, cool. Because I think just from servicing and being, being a good you know, funnel builder, you know, it's hard to train a team and have good standardized processes when you know, one person is on software A, yeah. one person is on software B, and then you're doing webinar you know, on software X and Y. And so just really diving into what is the minimum, because I, I like to kind of shorten the marketing stack as much as possible. Mm. So what's the minimum amount of tools we can use without being so chained to one tool that if they change something, you know, like it's, it's over. So I think it's a really good balance of trying to figure out what's the minimum amount of tools that we can work with, use to make sure our clients funnels are successful, mm -hmm. but not have them stuck in just one master system where yeah. if the prices go up, you know, something changes in the business, all of a sudden we have to redo everything. Mm -hmm. So that's such I a good thing to start on as yeah. well. Like, you know, standardizing what you deliver to all your customer customers, standardizing your operating procedures, it, it reduces overhead. So that's incredibly refreshing to hear from like a, <laughs> from a tools perspective, frankly. Yeah. So yeah, that's great. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm wholly on board with that. Great point. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of the specific tools, um, that we use right now for the front end, mm -hmm. we pretty much recommend using Thrive Themes. I know it's not sure. the least expensive option out there, um, but I think from a services perspective, this is something that I always tell clients is, you need to, you really do need to own your funnel. Mm. And so with some very rare exceptions, like if they are married to a webinar, then we'll use something like EverWebinar, mm -hmm. even though, you know, thanks to the Google and Apt Apple updates, I mean, Web, automated webinars are, I think, are pretty close to being killed. Yep. Uh, and we can talk more about that, that software problem that all, yep. all those funnel builders or webinars have. Whereas with Thrive Themes, it's on WordPress, which means it's flexible enough if Thrive Themes ever does something like ridiculous or dumb, and you're like, oh my gosh, we need to move all of our pages away, you're on WordPress, right? Mm -hmm. So I think, especially with the front end of the funnel, having, you know, either using Thrive Themes, I used to recommend Optimize Press. Uh, I'm not as huge of a fan of it anymore, yeah, simply yeah. because they seem to have really just honed in on solopreneurs. Yep. And their updates just are non-existent. They've been talking about releasing 3.0 for like six months now. Yeah. You know, it's just one of those things where I, I think Thrive is much more on top of it, even though it's not the most cost effective solution. Mm -hmm. I think it has enough breadth of tools where you can really be successful with 95% of your clients funnels out there. Yep. And they also have an agency package that uh, makes it pretty easy to help help and manage clients. Although I typically don't like using that one, mm -hmm. um, simply because the, what you get in terms of the reduced cost of paying for thrive themes, they ask you to pick up a lot more slack on the support, which is something that I don't really want to do because there are yeah. a lot of clients out there who just want you to build the funnel and then leave them alone. Yep. And so you don't, you don't want to have that awkward, well, we set you up on the agency plan. So you have to come to us to support versus thrive themes. So that's just a little asterisk when servicing clients with Thrive Themes. Yeah, no, that's great. And, and you know, I know great things about Thrive. I know a lot of people, people are constantly trying to get me to move over there. Um, <laughs> kind of going back to your first point, standardization mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. kind of the name of the game, right? Because, you know, with all due respect to Thrive and Elementor and Beaver Builder and Optimized Press and all those guys out there, there's, we're not for short of choices with our page builders. 
but Thrive certainly has begun to position themselves as the funnel builder for WordPress, I think. Yes, I, I think they are. I, I have been very disappointed with the fact that they have, they pretty much have nothing in terms of shopping cart. They, they do have a very light, mm. and I really mean light, you know, membership um, yes. plugin, I think it's called Apprentice. Right. And I think that's great for delivering free offers or if you want to do like what I've done on my site is I have a, a free membership tier mm -hmm. um, that's currently on the old version of Optimized Press. We'll be mm -hmm. moving that to, to Thrive Themes. So I think they have some good options there, but as soon as you get to actually collecting payments yep. is where personally, at least in our standardization, we're still going back and forth on a lot of different things because yep. um, Thrive just drops the ball. They recently did say that they were going to do this deep integration with a company called Send Owl for uh, their Thrive Apprentice plugin. And, but looking at Send Owl, I mean, it's, I just think it's too expensive for what mm -hmm. you get. And um, I think there are a lot of better options out there in terms of shopping cart. But I agree that Thrive is definitely moving towards being the all-in-one funnel. I mm -hmm. think it's just much more top of funnel. As soon as you get into relation, customer relationship management, yeah. you want to do upsells or downsells, Thrive themes just drops off. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, there's a bunch of options and we can, we can talk about that later, but there's a bunch of options we've found that kind of handle that, that transaction side. So, okay, cool. Uh, cool. What's next? What do we go for next? Yeah. Well, the next part is the email autoresponder, yeah. right? So I think that's, um, that's the, next, the next place you can logically go. And based upon what we've played with so far, for most, I'd, I'd say most new, new clients, like brick and mortar businesses, they don't need the automations that mm -hmm. come with like the convert kits, the drips and, you know, active campaigns and infusion softs. Like that's mm -hmm. just complete overkill for most businesses. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really easy to jump in and want to do all these automated sequences, but yep. really at the end of the day, like dealing with, um, you know, dealing with a mortgage company, it's pretty, it's a pretty linear process dealing with sure. realtors or, or accountants. And so with local based businesses, we still just go to MailChimp yep. and that's simply because it's free. It's very easy for people to understand. And if someone's just getting started with their e-commerce um, and they've just set up their WooCommerce or yep. Shopify store and we're coming in later, we don't do, we don't touch the building e-commerce sites, but yep. if we're coming in later to help them with their email marketing, then we'll also use MailChimp because they have some pretty good standard integrations with those. And so it's very easy for us to put together some automated email sequences for those e-commerce clients. When we get into something that's a little more advanced, then we'll look at something like ConvertKit or ActiveCampaign. Mm -hmm. And I'm still going back and forth on between the two. And the main reason I go back and forth between the two just has to do with kind of cost and mm -hmm. how much complexity do you really need? Like we had a client uh, a few months ago where he had an online course and he had a quiz. So, you know, there's uh, there's literally 10 different sequences inside of active campaign, yeah. depending upon, you know, which, what the results of their quiz were, was, and which is great. But if you're not spending five or 10 K a month to get the volume of traffic through the back end of your funnel to actually test all of those, it's a waste of time and you're just yep. spreading yourself too thin, which I think number of occurrences or relevancy of data is something you also have to consider because if the client's not spending 10K, don't set up all those sequences because you're going to be splitting the traffic yeah. and you're going to sit there twiddling your thumbs like, okay, well, we'll get to a thousand subscribers yeah, eventually, yeah. right? And yeah. so that's where I kind of go to something like a convert kit because it's very easy to set up and they have enough automations mm. where you can really easily show the client what's going on. So a client can go in there and if they, they decide they don't want to work with you anymore, they can figure out ConvertKit. The big problem I have with ConvertKit is when someone unsubscribes, and this is something that I think a lot of people don't know. When mm. someone unsubscribes from one sequence, mm. ConvertKit automatically unsubscribes them from everything, which I just think is, Bonkers. Yeah. yeah. You have to set up. So you have to set up custom unsubscribe links for all of your sequences for your clients. So that's <laughs> right. Like, all right. <laughs> that's just, that's just crazy to me. Maybe they fixed it, but the last time I did a review yeah. video, I was looking through and it, it just, you know, I see people, they go through one part of my, our, our funnel and then they just, they don't get anything else. And it's, it's just ridiculous. At the same time though, 
just jumping into an active campaign, speaking of standardized processes and keeping yeah. things simple, you know, is, can, can just be overkill for most people unless they're spending five to, to 10 K a month in, in ad spend. And mm-hmm. I think as a agency, I know I'm talking a lot here, but as an That's agency, good. you also have to consider what happens when they leave you, right? Because mm-hmm. we all like to think that clients are going to be love, love our product, love our service forever. and stick with us yeah. forever. But the, the reality is that's just not how it works, right? Mm. And so when, when you're thinking about your long-term business in terms of how you're perceived in the field and your brand, how people feel when they leave is arguably just as mm. important as how people feel when they're with you. Yep. So if you set up this ridiculous, you know, convoluted complex system yeah. and then they decide, you know, the economy goes down and they don't have, you know, the fees to, they can't pay your fee or they decide to go a different way. They go in and they try and use this stuff. And it's like, what on earth? What did they do? Like, yeah. I, I don't know what's, I don't know what's going on. So I know that that's probably not a popular opinion because there's the other, there's the other side of that where, well, you know, the more complicated you make, the harder it is for people to switch. Yeah. But I think you, you, I think as a looking just long-term from a branding perspective, I'd much rather have people say, hey, you know that uh, Jason guy and his team, they did a really good job and we left. And you know, we've even like doubled or tripled our income because we were able to take their system and run with it as opposed to, oh, that Jason guy's just a complete you know, jerk. He yeah, set this yeah, thing yeah. up and, and nothing seems to work. Like I deleted one email and everything's broken. So I think... Um, uh, I think that kind of summarizes yeah. what I, the three big solutions for email marketing and then also the considerations of what happens when the client leaves and then making sure that you're not overkilling with um, whatever the ad spend is for the client, making sure you're not segmenting the, the list too much. Yeah. Do you know, that's an absolutely fascinating, I, truly, I have never heard that angle before and it's absolutely fascinating. Um, I think from a high level, I love MailChimp. I don't use them anymore, but I'm, I've got a huge mm. amount of respect for what they did to email marketing. They turned it from something that only big marketers knew about to something that oh, I'm going to set up a Shopify store. And now all of a sudden I've got free newsletters that can go out and I can put people in lists. Yes. They actually changed people's perception of email marketing from only thing that like corporate companies do to spam you into something that you can do with your customers. They, I think they've moved into more of the e-commerce space now and they integrate very well. Again, yes, arguably, yeah. I think they integrate easier than a lot of the other solutions. Mm-hmm. I think the problem is that all email autoresponders or CRMs or email programs, they'll do like 90% of what you need them to do. And it, there's, <laughs> yes. it, there's not one program that ever does 100%. And they sort of share exactly. boundaries. It's like oh, one does one and one does the other. Um, but that part about you know, the documentation process for when they leave. I agree, man. I've never thought about that, but that's, that's fascinating. Um, particularly with the, with the, the options that you brought up. That's really interesting. Yeah. It's, um, it's something I think I picked up from the agency I used to work at Yeah, where it, I was a PPC manager and where clients, you know, they wanted to, where I would do too good of a, sometimes I do too good of a job. Yeah. They could take over and be just as successful. Right. Cause yeah. I mean, Google it, after six months, you know, it, it pretty much runs on autopilot yeah. um, unless you're, you're launching something new. And I think that's where I originally got the idea of, well, yeah, it stinks for the business, but they're, they're happy, right? Yeah. They're happy. And so if we know that they're going to be gone in six months, then we can just change our pricing and change the way we do our services. And I think they're, there's a large, and I, I tend to, to find that there are some business owners who want to understand and actually want to yeah. learn. Of course, I think there's, there's a fine line between giving away all your, you know, giving sure. away all your secret sauce and, and being a, a good service provider. But I, I always look at like what happens in five or 10 years down the road when my name comes up and someone says, oh, and like, what is that ex client <laughs> Are yeah. they going to be happy? Or are they going to yeah. be pissed off? And so I think that accumulation effect over time, I think is, is going to matter. Of course, I have no substantial evidence for that, right? I've only been in business two years. So. <laughs> I, think, I think there is evidence because I remember um, 
kind of a mentor of mine talking about the checkout process at a hotel. He said, when you check mm. in, you, know, they get, you have a hot towel, mints, you know, they say, well, can I get you a drink? Can we deliver everything to the room? But when you check out, it's like, boom, 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 we, get, we want yeah. you home. But he was like, that's your last interaction with the hotel. Any smart person would say, we're going to make the checkout process the best part of the entire stay because that's the last interaction you have with the business. So I agree. If you have and you're trying to hold them hostage because of the complexity of your software, that's not value. That's holding them hostage. So (laughs) try and add value. So I think that's fantastic. I think that's a really good idea. And it also kind of, again, goes back to that earlier point of standardizing your process, having documentation, mm-hmm. having people leave so that they can, you know, take it over themselves. And, and maybe you move into other areas and, you know, you take on other projects with them, but that kind of tests your documentation. Um, so it's a good litmus test. I like that a lot. I, I just want to, before we kind of move on, you mentioned sure. that you've been in business for two years and, and when we started talking, you said, look, man, I can only go on personal experience and what I'm building. I'm like, that's more than fine. <laughs> how did you get started? You mentioned you're a PPC manager. How do you go from PPC manager to 18,000 subscribers on YouTube and, and <laughs> this? Yeah. Um, a lot of just head in the sand. <laughs> grind. Sure. Uh, I wouldn't even call it hustle. I think yeah. it was just, it's, it's, uh, it's grueling. So I, um, yeah, I actually, I, my, I actually started out as an accountant and I just quickly found out that, um, oh, right. it wasn't, it wasn't for me. I enjoyed building the Excel sheets more than, than doing the actual taxes. Huh? And a uh, long story short, I got into trying to build my own business, teaching people how to invest in the stock market. Yeah. And, um, you know, I learned a lot out of that, especially in terms of trying to sell a product that nobody wants because most mm-hmm. people just want to be told what stock to buy. They don't want to do the yes, research themselves. That's true. Yeah. And out of that experience, I went and got a job at a marketing agency for a few years. And then kind of close, I kind of close to the end of it, I had actually started playing with this whole YouTube thing. Mm. And it was simply one of those things where I wanted to expand. I I saw the rising costs of Google ads Mm -hmm. and I was looking at it and I started watching some other influencers, you know, and following some of the, the other big internet marketing gurus of of the time. And I started to notice that the ones that I saw being successful who weren't being pigeonholed into how to make money online, um, were, were actually giving a tremendous amount of content and value. They weren't just trying to sell you a thousand dollar course. And so I thought, well, let me, let me go try this whole personal branding thing. And long, long story short, there was some stuff that didn't really work out at the agency. They didn't really like what I was doing on the side. And so I thought, well, you know, I might, as, I might as well try this thing full time. And I went in and I did a 60 video 30 day challenge. That's kind of how I pushed off, you know, pushed off my channel. And since then, it's just been focusing on trying to become better at creating content and getting as much valuable content, actionable content out there as, as possible. Because mm-hmm. I personally saw that there was this, there was room in the market for yeah kind of three month to two year mark where most people drop off at that three month mark. Mm -hmm. So I don't tend to do any content around how to make money online. Like you need to know what you want to do before my content's valuable to you. And I think really focusing in on that market, which is a lot smaller um, than, you know, the people who are just entering into the, how do I become an entrepreneur or be successful with my digital marketing? And the the channel growth has been pretty much 90% just posting as many videos as valuable videos as possible yeah. and maybe 10% playing with some YouTube ads. But I think I've killed more videos than helped <laughs> with experimenting I'm, with YouTube ads. Because I, and I often use you as an example for, oh, wow. <laughs> for like content, particularly thumbnails, because your thumbnail game is on point. Oh, thank you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and I show people, I'm like, okay, so three years ago, your videos are, like you say, and I'm, I'm in them now. Mm-hmm. Stocks, investing, how you do that. And the, the point that I try to make is, if you start producing content regularly that is wrong and bad for all intents and purposes, you are then one video ahead of everyone else who hasn't done anything. And over time, 
you have now found, like you said, a small market, but a very specific one. And you know, your videos are kind of, obviously I'm subscribed, but they pop up a lot and I see them all over the place, particularly, you know, the, um, the ones that actually go into detail on how to use a specific tool for a specific purpose. Like today it was how to use Canva for a lead magnet, hyper specific, yes. yeah. hyper valuable. Like that, th those two things coming together is very, very valuable, but it was through doing that over and over and over that, you know, like you, you've seen this, this, this rise, um, which I think is, you know, wholly justified. So that to me is very, very interesting on, on how quickly I say three years is quick, but yeah, like, <laughs> like, but, um, yeah. And, and it's, it's just, it's just very interesting to see that. So, and now of course, like you say, you're able to talk about tools for the entire funnel system when three years ago, that was not your main like area of expertise for lack of a better term. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's the great part about the kind of documentation style that I've chosen yep. where if I think the, one of my very first videos when I switched from stocks to, to business was, Hey, I don't have everything figured out. Like at that yeah. point, you know, I'm, I run traffic, right? Yep. I run Google ads traffic, which is arguably the, the lowest in terms of like skill set needed. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, I have videos where I talk about how I blew $3,000 on Facebook ads and, and yep. nothing worked. Right. Yep. And so I think that, you know, transparency pushes a lot of people away mm -hmm. because they go, Oh, what's this guy? Like I was sitting in his little studio. Like what the heck does he know? Yep. But at the same time, when you go through that kind of just documenting what you're actually working mm -hmm. on and the struggles you're going with, it's very easy for me to find those specific problems that come yeah. up. And that's why I'm able to tell you things like, Hey, guess what? ConvertKit is going to unsubscribe everybody. Yeah. If, uh, yeah. You're, you're, you're not careful, right? You can't get that if you're, if you're only, if you're only in it for affiliate marketing, right? If yeah. you're only in it, in the affiliate game. And I, I pick on those guys because their reviews are always so top level. They just, read yeah, yeah, the sales yeah. page and then regurgitate stuff. Like, Come on, give me, yeah. give me some value here. And so I think that coupled with just, as you talked about being very specific and mm -hmm. I know most of, most of my videos, they'll top right now, they'll top out around five or 700 views. Mm -hmm. And that's simply because there's not a whole lot of people searching for that specific problem. Yeah. But I looked at it as, well, if I solve problem A, B, C, D, I'm just going to go through the entire alphabet uh -huh. and number of occurrences is going to allow me to be valuable in that point of frustration. Yep. Like a perfect example is when I was using, when I first got started, I started using a tool. Oh gosh. It's called Bloom. I forget who. Oh yeah. Uh, I forget like Divi. I like Divi. Yes. Yeah. And there was a problem where you couldn't have, we, you couldn't have it pop up when someone clicked a button. It was like, come on, guys, why, why can't you do this, yeah. right? And so I made, a, you know, I was right there, it was like, what, one or 2 a.m. in the morning, right, yeah. as, as most funnels are. Yeah. So I just made a quick video saying, hey, here's what it is, here's where I figured it out. And I actually had to go find a blog post, so I just linked the blog post below. And while that doesn't get a lot of views, I think something that people don't appreciate with content is, you know, the three or 400 people who are, in the exact same situation because it's always late at night. Mm -hmm. They're like, why the heck won't this work? Yep. They watch the five minute video. You know, I'm the not to be arrogant, but you know, I'm king of the king of the world right, right there. To yeah, them. No, you are. Like, oh my gosh, you solved my problem. And so I think that's a much better way to start I a agree. relationship with a potential subscriber or potential prospect as opposed to like, oh, I wonder how to make money online or oh, yep. I wonder uh, I wonder which advertising platform is the best for me. And they yep. type it. Like I, I'm being a little facetious, but I think something that a lot of people don't think about with content is they just go after the volume, yeah. you know, searches, which I'm not, I'm not going to, I can't rank. I've tried several times to rank for things about how to be successful on YouTube. Like yep. I always just get hammered. Right. Yeah. But when I'm very specific, you know, that's where I've seen success over time. I think it's just really hard for people to grasp the fact that, yeah, you're going to post 400 videos yeah. and three years later, organically YouTube's only going to give you 200 views and you're yep. going to have to wait six months for it to start rolling in. I, I think the, cause it's interesting cause you've got a bunch, you've got at least five videos here with over 50,000 views, you know, uh, around everything, PPC, Canva, click funnels, same with me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, 
okay, that's fine. That's what attracts traffic. Like at the moment, as this goes out, I think if you search for AppSumo on YouTube, I'm, num- I'm the number one result. I don't know why, <laughs> because I'm actually, <laughs> it's a video telling people not to use AppSumo. So I've seen they've published a couple of videos to try and bump me off that. But yeah, the, the goal <laughs> is not the volume, because then I would go into prank videos or I would do like mm-hmm. slime videos, right? The goal is for when someone goes, like especially on Google, sell a marketing funnel. How do you sell a marketing funnel? That's just me. But it's qualified because that person isn't exactly, as you said, one of those people that's just starting out or the people that jump from bandwagon to bandwagon. One minute they're selling fidget spinners, now they're in Bitcoin. I want people who are dedicated to the funnel niche. And just like you said, if someone's searching for that very specific Bloom opt-in problem, chances are that they're pretty committed to that. And I would way rather have them as a subscriber than just a bunch of people, like you say, who, I mean, we're way off topic here, but a bunch of people who just want a random... (laughs) like, you know, internet marketing video. So, uh, you know, there you go, guys. There's a micro lesson. We'll get back to the topic. Yeah. I promise, but but that, there's a micro lesson there. So that's, that's fantastic. So we've got our, we've got our front end, which you recommend Thrive. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, email autoresponder, a few different um, options there. What's, what's next? So the next part is the one that I'm most shaky on, and that is the shopping cart. I think this one, I probably, I, I just keep flip-flopping every which way. Mm-hmm. Um, I, the one I've used most consistently, mm-hmm. but I don't recommend most of the time because of the price is mm-hmm. Sam cart. Um, mm-hmm. I think in terms of just, if you're looking for something that's going to be, give you all the bells and whistles you need with your shopping cart. I know they keep changing their, their pricing. Mm-hmm. Um, Sam cart, I actually was in their beta when they first launched. Yep. I was really happy with it. And I think with all the pricing changes, I think it's around a hundred dollars a month or something, which yep. for most businesses just isn't, isn't reasonable. Mm-hmm. And so the next one is thrive cart because it's still at a mm-hmm. one-time fee and you can, you can, you can still find the affiliate links for the one-time fee. I think it's still at 600 bucks or something. Yep. And so I think that's a pretty good, if you're going to be doing anything with digital sales, I think uh-huh. that one's, that one's pretty good. And then after that, really like either my business partner is a big fan of WooCommerce, um, the WooCommerce. So um, we do that for clients because he knows that. I don't know anything about WooCommerce. Mm -hmm. And then the final one uh, is just the basic PayPal, pay PayPal 25, 20 or 25 bucks a month Mm -hmm. and put it on your site. I think Mm -hmm. that to me is just the easiest way to go. It's not super cool or sexy, but it does help a lot in terms of you have to think about people coming to your site and they have to make a decision. It doesn't matter how good your sales copy is. They still have to make a decision whether or not they're going to hand over your credit card, especially with all the, the hacks. It's just going to get worse, right? Yeah. It's just going to get worse. People are going to get more wary. And when you have PayPal there, they know that PayPal isn't yeah. giving anybody else their credit card information. Yeah. And so as much pain and headache as PayPal can be with a merchant, because I've heard yeah. some horror stories, especially if you're, yeah. you know, especially if you're, you're towing the line with the types of courses you're selling. Yep. Um, you know, there, there are some issues there, but I think overall just having 20, 25 bucks a month, PayPal is on your site. You have your SSL certificate. Yeah. It's the simplest, it's the simplest way to go. Clients know what PayPal is mm-hmm. and most people can, can trust them. Something I'm interested in looking into more. I'm starting to see e-commerce sites using the Amazon checkout. Yeah. And that's something that we just haven't explored. But if you're looking at other options, alternative to PayPal, that would be, that would definitely be another one to, to look at. Yeah. And this was our biggest problem when we were setting up our membership site for us for sell your service was we've got mm-hmm. very complex funnels in the back end, like the way that we upsell and downsell order bumps, all this kind of stuff. And we had kind of hacked together three or four solutions that, kind, that worked most of the time. It was sort of duct taped together. And again, there's, there's, it's very rare that you come across a solution that does everything for all people. And that yeah. I think is kind of the problem is I think people do think there is a fix all solution when if you're selling physical products, the cart for lack of a better time system that you're going to use is going to be different to that of a digital product or like a yes. service service based business. Cause you know, if I'm putting $10,000 clients through a process and they're going to pay a $10,000 retainer, I'm not going to use a $10,000 
shopping cart symbol for WooCommerce. I'm going to use a, a very different yeah. platform. So it's, it's, it's interesting that you've got a few options there. Um, yeah. Have you heard of Access Ally? Access Ally. That's like, that's what, not. that's what we use for our, like all our membership and funnel stuff. And it's a WordPress plugin. I interviewed Natalie, who's the, the founder of it last, last week. Personally, I'm in love with it. I, I, I couldn't believe how okay. good it was. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I, cause we have a piece of funnel software and we have affiliations with loads of funnel software and, and payment processes and stuff. I couldn't believe how good it is. It's not really designed for delivery. You could kind of fashion it into that, but I think we're only going to get more and more sophisticated payment systems come out, hopefully, because yes. frankly, they're a bit of a mess at the moment. They really are. You know? <laughs> um, but I love your point about PayPal, you know, it just having a, bu a buy button on there is better than no buy button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's really easy to just try to overcomplicate things yeah. um, in the beginning. I mean, if you, if you launch a client's funnel and they're, 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 you know, getting a bunch of sales, then yeah. Okay. Then all of a sudden they have cash. You can go, go right. do something more complex. But I think it's, it's back to one of those things of like, let's just keep it simple in the beginning because there's so many other variables um, that yep. contribute to whether or not someone even gets to that shopping cart. So why pay $200 a month or a hundred dollars a month to, to Sam cart when, you know, it takes you three months to dial in your, your Facebook and YouTube ads. Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you just, you just don't need point. it yet. Yep. Yep. That's a great point. Um, awesome. Shopping cart. Yeah. Again, really good addition there. We've got our shopping cart fixed. What's uh, what's next on the list? So I think the final thing on the list is the mem actual, you know, membership site. Um, if you're doing a membership site, obviously if you're doing a service or you're doing e-commerce, then you're shipping out the product or you're actually, I think, delivering the, the service. And then mm -hmm. that would be a, I think that'd be a separate discussion. Yep. Um, so in terms of the last step, if you're doing some sort of digital product, Membership sites, I, this is another area where I'm still kind of, I'm actually actively researching this right now because we're going to do access ally. membership content. Uh, I'll look, yeah, I'll yeah. definitely look at Access Ally. Yeah. Um, so really right now, I think based upon what I've seen, mm -hmm. um, I haven't personally used any of them. Um, my business partner is a really big fan of membership. Oh, shoot. Now I'm going to blank on the name. It's membership something pro. Oh, paid it's membership on, pro? Um, yeah. Paid PFP. membership pro. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Paid yep. membership pro. I mean, it's 40 bucks. It's going to be a pain to set up. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's not super user friendly, like a wish list or, or member or member press. Yeah. Um, but in terms of just cost and ability to integrate, yeah. it does have a basic PayPal integration again. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I know wishlist wishlist just launched their 3.0 version. I haven't checked it's, it out yet. No, and, and then, um, the the top one that I would currently recommend is member member pass. I think it's called member member press pass. Shoot. Uh, yeah, member press oh, might no. be. Well, there's member member press. As well. Member press. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, memberium. Uh, I think they they uh, yeah. If you're doing active campaign or infusion yep. stuff, they look. Good. But I I think um, just in terms of cost and features, member pass. Uh, makes oh yeah yeah press. it is it is member press yeah it is member press yeah that's member press I think yeah. um, member adam yeah. member prizer talks about it okay yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um that seems to be the 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 best in terms of just kind of just getting started yeah. in terms of more complex memberships you know i'm still i'm still testing i personally still use the the super basic optimized press just because it's yeah. one that there's only one product in there that we have right now um, but I think that's another area where there, there's definitely a huge space for someone to come in and, and make something that's, that's simple and, and to the point. Yeah. And again, like yeah. this is to me, the membership one was the part where like we were tearing our hair out because we would work with a company like, I don't know, AICPA who have got like 10,000 courses and every single course has got a different price point and even each course can be bundled together. Some of them have got levels. We had to custom build an LMS and a membership platform for them. But Ooh. on the other side, yeah, yeah it cost us a fortune. <laughs> but on the other <laughs> side, you have like 
if you're selling one course and you have a splinter product and you want to be able to move people through the funnel, your customers want to do that. There's so many options available. And again, WordPress, just like the ability to do that all inside the site, it just blows my mind mm-hmm. that we have access to this. Even, you know, three years ago, that was just unheard of. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I, I remember when, um, the very first version, very first version of Wishlist member yeah. came out and I was using it for, for one of my first products and, oh my gosh, it was such a, such a pain. I remember yeah. manually going and adding little short codes to every single, you know, page on the site. Yeah. And I, I think one of the other things I wanted to mention, I, another very popular one yeah. is member mouse, which yes. is kind of like an yeah. all in one done. And I, I like that for simplicity, but the big asterisk there is part of the reason I, I can't get on board with it is it's you're signing yourself up for the same vulnerability as if you were paying for something like a, a click funnels where if you stop paying yep. the whole thing mm-hmm. blows up and you know, going through all of the features they have, it's, it's really attractive, yep. but you have to remember like this, if this is your product, you know, you're, if you do member mouse, like you are married to them for life because the way that they've set up the software is everything's inside of their system. It's not actually all on your site. And so it's cool. You can have, you know, click one click upsells inside of membership sites, but if you stop paying your entire site goes down. And so I think that's where the, again, like looking at WordPress and all the different solutions, you know, making sure that whatever solution you have, actually everything happens on your site and it's Mm -hmm. actually stored in your WordPress database versus Mm -hmm. some other thing where it kind of connects. And I think that was also my problem with, with Sendow that Thrive Themes was recommending where you have to make sure whatever solution you do choose that a hundred percent of the client information Mm -hmm. is on your database because as soon as it's someplace else, you're locked in and you can't switch. It might be expensive to switch, Mm -hmm. but at least you can switch if it's all in WordPress. Yeah, it's, it's one of the reasons, yeah. I, you know, because I use Active Campaign as, our, as essentially as our CRM and database and all this stuff. The reason I've noticed more and more that's become the center of our business, almost more so than the website, is because at mm-hmm. absolute worst, I can download a CSV list. I will open up, in my case, Blue, <laughs> Blue Mail, and I will manually email people. Like, <laughs> like that, if that's what it comes yeah. down to, that's what I'll do. And, and I think you're right. A lot of the membership stuff out there, it's stuff like, like you know, you have um, Kajabi and Teachable and stuff. Mm-hmm. And yeah, if, if some people want to go straight into that, that's fine. But your content is on their site and that's it. You literally like have to manually take that out or even redo it from fresh to be able to move it over to another site. Yeah. And, you know, you have to really balance the tool with the ownership. And, you know, you and I have kind of talked about that a little bit before. That's That's kind of the the big thing at the moment is where do you land and yeah, the, the membership side of it. Um, that's, that's kind of a big bone of contention for a lot of people. Yeah, I, I think so. And especially in the YouTube comments, it's, it's kind of surprising how yeah. most people don't seem to grasp the yeah. gravity of like how much yeah. you don't control. I, I, yeah. I did a video, um, you know, D, talking about why I didn't want builder all. I won't go into that, sure. but, um, <laughs> but I was giving the example of, I think I was using a silly example of like, if you're a race car driver and your job is to show up and, and drive, you know, you should own the car that you're driving. Yep. You shouldn't, you know, go to, you know, Hertz or Avis or enterprise or in a car before, yeah. <laughs> before you hit the track. Like what happens yeah. if the car's not there? What's happens if they, you know, double the price or, mm-hmm. you know, they only have a, a four cylinder and you need a V8 cause you're about to, you know, race. So yep. It's one of those things where I think a lot of people are very sucked into the, yep. you know, especially, I mean, Kajabi looks amazing, right? Yeah. And, but it's like, you, but you don't own anything. You're just, yep. you're renting and it's month to month. It's a month yep. to month rent. And I know from working at some of these large, we used, I used to work for a very large data security company and their job was basically, they would acquire smaller data companies and then you were part of their solution, whether you liked it or not. And oh, by the way, the price is now not thirty nine ninety nine; it's two hundred and forty nine ninety nine a month. And you have to pay for each additional user. And that, that was like their business model. That was what they did. To assume that the platform that you invest in on someone else's is always going to stay like that. And for someone like 
Comcast, Warner Brothers, you know, anyone to come across and acquire a company like that, which at some point they're going to, and just yeah. say, this is the way it works now. You're like, well, <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, Prices go up, service goes down. I, you yeah. know, and I, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad I found somebody else who, who understands that ownership. And um, Mike from the membership guys, another UK company, he, he, he talks to me about oh, that yeah. as well. And um, he's, he's a big believer in that as well. Um, so yeah, that's, um, uh, that's a really good point to end on as well with, with the tools, like the balance between ownership and, you know, easy, uh, easy, yeah. easy of use. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Convenience. Um, yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing that with me. This is why I like doing these. Cause I basically get to just pick people's brains, you know, and, and you've done so many videos on this. Um, where can people like find you? How can they reach out to you? How can they get more Jason? Sure. So the best place is YouTube. Um, I still have the audacious goal of replying to every single comment. That is so, a <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's starting to eat up my week. Yeah. But um, so yeah, Jason, it's actually YouTube slash Jason Whaling 8 because I didn't set up my YouTube channel the right that's way. Awesome. So um, <laughs> uh, that's, that's really the, the best place to go. I'm posting there at least three times a week. Mm -hmm. And we're actually working on, uh, internally on the team to be even posting some more content. So wow. if you ever have a question, like comment section, I'm in there at least three or four times a week. So I, I've still replied to every single one. That's this, incredible. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Well done. So yeah, obviously we'll link down to that and um, you know, I'll, I'll be sharing a bunch of this stuff. Jason, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your time. Yeah. You too, Mike. It's been a blast. Awesome. <laughs> All right, speak to you later, man. All right. Take care.